team who appears to have no problems right now, that would be the Golden State Warriors. So would Kevin Durant be a warrior if Golden State held on to beat the Cavs in the finals? In a presentation at Stanford University's Graduate School of Business, the team received an award. Kevin Durant was asked whether it would have mattered had the Warriors won the championship instead of losing Game 7 in terms of his decision to join the team. Quote, well, as it started to unfold, it was no question, no way you could go to this team. And I was just like a kid, like, I'd really like to play with these guys. I'd get wide open threes. I could just run up and down the court, get wide open layups. I was basically begging him. I was like, yo, this would be nice. Then once I sat down with these guys, everything that I wanted to know about them, they kind of showed me. But we don't have to talk about that, though, because they didn't get the job done, and they came after me. And who knows what would have happened, but I guess you could say I'm glad they lost. Stephen A., any problems with these comments from KD? I believe there is. Um, I believe anybody that is, should have a problem with KD because, listen, we're not going to question the integrity of Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant is a superstar. Kevin Durant is one of the top three players in the world. And I hate having to get on him about this stuff because even though I agree, I, I firmly believe and will never change the fact that I think his, his, his decision to go to the Golden State Warriors is the weakest move I've ever seen by a superstar. The fact of the matter is it's his right to make it and it doesn't make him any less of a person and it certainly doesn't make him any less of a basketball player. It's just that, you know, I just thought it was a weak move. Having said all of that, I don't think that Kevin Durant understands the magnitude of what transpired last year. When he decided to go to Golden State, you know what people instantly thought about, Max? They thought about Kevin Durant in Game 6 last year. When they were up 3-2, after they had lost Game 5, being up 3-1, everybody pre pretty much predicted they'd lose Game 5 to Golden State at the Oracle. Game 6, you're back in Oklahoma City. Charles Barkley and TNT on TNT, rather, called it an awful first half on the part of Kevin Durant, and he was right on the money because everything that we had come to know about Kevin Durant was not, not you know, it wasn't applicable. You know, he was rushing shots. He was taking ill-advised shots. He, he, was, he was doing things that he never, ever, ever did. He looked, he didn't look composed. He didn't look together. He just, it, 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 it looked bad. It looked like a straight choke job. And so when you then turn around and you wait forever to be aggressive in the pivotal uh, series clinching game seven, and then you follow that up by going to Golden State, it brought into question how bad did Kevin Durant really, really want to win? Because had he won at Oklahoma City, it's my contention he could have done whatever he wanted to do and nobody could say anything because he would have delivered the goods for the franchise he had starred for for the previous nine years. But because he lost, everybody was saying, hey, you had a lot of people, not everybody, but a lot of people were sitting there saying, look, if he lost, then it's easier for him to make the decision to move. So it brings into a lot of conspiracy theories and all of this other stuff. Not that I believe it, because I know that Kevin Durant cares too much about the game of basketball, and he cares too much about his own individual performance. He wants to win. But at the same time, you have to be cognizant of the noise that's out there, particularly when it's directly connected to your performance. Kevin Durant making a quote like this gives off the impression that even though he wanted to win and nobody should ever be stupid enough to question that, the priorities, the level of desperation and urgency that somebody of his magnitude, having played in the year in the NBA for nine years, being the superstar that he is, still devoid of an NBA championship, the level of urgency that he's supposed to have may not necessarily have been what it should have been. And so when you say a quote like this, you step back, if you're me, and you're going, wait a minute now, what the hell is that supposed to mean? So them losing made it easier for you? Well, what, what about you losing? Did that make it easier for you too? You start thinking like that because that game six, man, I, anybody that want to have a problem with me and anything that I'm saying, I will encourage them to go back and watch that game six. Oklahoma City versus Golden State. When Klay Thompson exploded, no doubt, ended up dropping about 41, and Steph Curry didn't hurt. He came out of his doldrums, and he did damage. Kevin Durant didn't look like himself. Kevin Durant didn't look like the Kevin Durant we all know and, and revere. 
Kevin Durant's a superstar. Composure is not his problem. Scoring is certainly not his problem. But somehow, some way, that particular game, and for the most part, game seven, it was. And a question, and quotes like that leave some folks wondering why. I don't follow That's that. The bottom line. I don't follow that logic. I agree with you when you said that you weren't one of the people who felt that way. But there were those who were buying into conspiracy theories, which usually come from people with kind of paranoid minds and delusions because they either don't have access to high quality information or don't know how to process information when they get it. Those are the people who thought he would throw a game. I agree with you there. But the, I don't follow this logic that if he loses to Golden State, he has more of a pass to leave. No, if he beats Golden State, and wins a championship especially, but even just beats Golden State, he then has an excuse to say, look, I did what I was supposed to do beating those guys. Now it's time for me to go. He tied business up. He can leave. I don't get the logic that says if he loses to them, it makes him easier to go. Let the insider talk to you right now, Please Max. do. I believe exactly what you just said, and that's what I said. And then guys in the NBA community came up to me and said, do you know Kevin Durant? I said, what are you talking about? They said, had he won, in his world, it would have been more difficult for him to leave. Mm. Because you've worked to build all of this, and finally you are a champion, and you bring that to Oklahoma City, in his world, gotcha. it would have been more difficult for him to leave had he won. Given his psychological because, profile. Right. That, that, what, okay. That's what... That's what they're saying. I don't know that this because is I want to make sure. Kev, I want to make sure Kev, everybody understand. I did not talk to Kevin Durant about this. I do not know. I am telling you what NBA insiders have told me. Guys in the league, they say, "Do you know this dude? Do you do you know how he thinks? It would have been more difficult for him to leave Stephen A. had he won." rather than had he That's lost. That's why I asked Stephen That's A, because when you come to an opinion like that that doesn't make sense to me, I, I usually assume you have information that I'm not privy yes. to because everyone yes. texts you all day this long from that. all over the league. Right. right. I, I, so I get that. Given his psychological profile, uh, right. it would have been more difficult for him to leave. Let me just say, I was saying all last year, when it looked like Durant might leave, it was an open question, and the Warriors looked like they could challenge the Bulls' all-time wins record. I was saying all year on Sports Nation. I don't think Kevin Durant can leave the Thunder to go to the all-time winningest single-season team who are also back-to-back -back champions to be the second-best player on that team. That's when it looked like Steph Curry be MVP, and I assumed he'd also be MVP of the finals, of which I was clearly very wrong about, about the second part. At any rate, I, I would maintain that position the whole time. Once they lost, meaning Golden State lost in the finals. I also said on Sports Nation at the time, this opens the door for Kevin Durant because he's no longer going to the winningest team ever back-to-back -back champions. He's going to a team that couldn't get over the LeBron hump because it's really Mount Everest LeBron. It's tacit acknowledgement that LeBron is so great that when he has a crew, boy, it's going to take more than the winningest team ever. You got to add also the best available superstar, and then maybe you can get over him. So I thought there was an opening for him. And let me just say, for those those who excoriate Kevin Durant about this. And I know you've made the distinction between what LeBron did forming a team and Kevin Durant joining a team already with chemistry. But to me, in the bigger picture, when LeBron was roundly criticized for a kind of anti-competitive move forming that super team in Miami, my point of view was, look, this is what LeBron James wants to do. He wants to win championships, and he wants to play with his friends on South Beach. Uh, I can't criticize a guy for that. And, and this is what Kevin Durant wants, it seems to me. He wants to play basketball the way he thinks it should be played. He doesn't want to be in a situation with another superstar where it's constantly about who takes the last shot, who's the alpha. He wants to fit in as a, an important piece on a team where the guy who takes the shot is the open man. And in Golden State, he saw that. And the fact that they lost gave him the kind of just enough daylight, just enough of, of an opening to actually join them. Fine. We disagree there because I, I don't, I don't want to use the word excoriate because he certainly has the right to do what he did, and he's no scrub. He's going to be a superstar no matter what team he's playing for because he's one of the top three players in the world. Having said all of that, because he's one of the top three players in the world, I consider it to be an ultra-weak move, but that's because I'm an old-school dude 
that I think about the birds, the magics, the MJs, the Isaiahs, and others. And my attitude is you you don't sit up there and 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 join such a superior team like that. Okay, that's entirely different than joining forces and trying to become one, as opposed to jumping on a bandwagon on something that's already existed. My other point is this: to close this out, what you said about why Kevin Durant. You know, Golden State losing, and that made it easier. You're not wrong, but what I would say to you is that it's not complete. Both scenarios is the perfect ending for a guy who wanted to leave Oklahoma City to go to Golden State. You losing in the conference finals and them losing in the finals. One without the other would have made it difficult. Both together happening. That's a beautiful scenario that somewhat justifies it in the minds of people like Max Kellerman and others. But it doesn't work with me. He may win a championship, but at the same time, I, a matter of fact, he damn well better win a championship after making right. this move. It, it's just that I look at it and I say there's something about this that's tainted. It's the epitome of jumping on the bandwagon. Mm -hmm. And I've never seen anything like this in NBA history. The epitome of if you can't beat them, join them. Coming up next. It was fun to be out there, fun to be a part of, you know, us winning games. And I've talked at, le at length about how I've, you know, been feeling over the years. And I feel better now at 39 than I did when I was 29. And it was just, you know, I think due to a lot of things. So I feel like I'm in a good routine. And if I play a game like yesterday, I feel like by Wednesday practice, I'm, you know, geared up and ready to go. This is going to be good. That was Tom Brady saying he feels better now than he did at 29. They say 30 is the new 20, folks. Will Kane in the house. Good to see you for this conversation. Good to see all you folks. Thank you for joining us. This one's going to be fun. Max, I'd like to come to you, my friend. Yes. Um, would you still stand by your statement at this point after hearing Brady's comments that he feels better now at 39, that he will be falling off a cliff sooner than later? Of course. In the, I said in the next 18 months at the time, because no one plays well at 41. I left out Warren Moon, who had one very Ageism. good season. I, that's the only <laughs> player in the history of football to have a good season at 41. It was something less than his very best, but it, it was a good season. He passed for 3,600 yards back then, 25 touchdowns, 16 interceptions. Not exactly an MVP season, though he went to the Pro Bowl, and I think he won Pro Bowl MVP that year. But he was something less than an MVP, but a, a good player. That's the best 41-year-old season ever, ever. That's it. That's the only one. Um, now, now, I mentioned Brian Burke's study, who now works for ESPN, from 2014, where he talked about, and the reason I describe it as a cliff, yep. and when I went to research, like, maybe there are underlying things that, that warn you, hey, the cliff is coming. In fact, Brian Burke's research said, no, there are no warnings. There are no warning signs. The guys are cruising along at very high altitudes. They can do this forever. <whistles> they fall off without warning. Now, an interesting point that Burke brought up, is that maybe natural variance in performance can explain it. That, you know, no one stays at the same level every year all their careers. So sometimes you go down, sometimes you go up. But when a player goes down at 40, 41 years old, the assumption by everyone, including the player, is, oh, they must be done. And considering it's a tough sport and they usually have a lot of money by then, if they made it that long, they decide to retire. Whatever the case may be, I was saying the same thing about Peyton Manning a couple of years ago. And before everyone says, well, of course he had the surgery. Yeah, right. But I'm talking about when he was throwing his 55 touchdowns. Oh, he could do this forever. Peyton could go till 45. Look at this. No, 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 guys. He's heading for a cliff. No, he go. the next year he was on pace to do the same thing. Wound up with 39 because he, he started falling off because the injuries started adding up. And then, sure enough, there went the cliff and he went falling off like every player, including Brett Favre, including everyone who ever lived, who played the position, Tom Brady, is cruising along at an incredibly high altitude. He's my pick for greatest quarterback of all time. Will you he let, will, will be you will 40 speak. years old in August. Try to couch yep. it. Here comes the... I know you are talking about letting someone else speak. <laughs> yes, I am. Actually, Go yes, ahead, I Will. am. I, oh. I, I promise you, if there was a clock, you you dominate it. Pr oh. Trust oh. me. Oh. Can we get a clock? <laughs> okay, let's, let's get, get a clock. Go ahead. Let's get a clock. Oh, I'm up. Go ahead, Will. I thought, I thought I was a deciding vote between this, this epic battle <laughs> no, no, between no. you two. Oh. No, no, go no, ahead. No, no, it's you. Oh, you it's want you. me to make this rebuttal? You're going to let yes. me take the reins here, Stephen. Hey, let me show you what I'm up yes. against, by the way. I sit down here at the table. You're off in L.A. And look what I'm faced with this. Can you see that, Stephen? Yes. This is that a, is a list of all 40-year-old quarterbacks. This is Max's spreadsheet of all the quarterbacks yeah, he's yeah. ready to throw down here today. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right. You I don't need it. I don't need it. Right, because you're Here's, not going to talk about facts. Yeah, I'm go, oh, I'm going to tell you about facts. But, 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 I don't need way, it, but Will. notice he kept it over there. <laughs> well, by, I, by, and by now way, he's referring to it. Go ahead. By, yeah. by, the, way, Will, before, by the way, Will, before you speak, <laughs> yeah. I'm proud of the shirt, tie, jacket combination. Hmm. Uh, this is the second twinning. week in a row. I'm very, very proud of you. This, very proud. I'm, You're getting there. My You're spot there. on this Go show is, is, is entrenched firmly between you two, Stephen A., because about 30 seconds before we went on air, Max made fun of my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ahead, here's what I'm curious point. about with this spreadsheet. Really is George Blanda on here? You know, I, why, oh, what, but, but, why are you but, referring but, but, to my spreadsheet? That's what I want to know that you just mocked. George Blanda, no. played till he's 48 years old. You right. very kindly pointed out Warren Moon, Vinny Testaverde's in that <coughs> range sure. as well, Doug Flutie. These guys all played well into their 40s. Now, your contention is that there's a cliff, yep. that Brady's going to hit this cliff. Well, all due respect to that spreadsheet, Max, that's no great insight. That's how things go in this world. Right. Failure. I thought it wasn't, and then everyone started arguing against me. Failure, death, anything kind of happens suddenly. If things go bad, they go bad quickly. The question is when, and this is the thin limb you're out on, specifically saying soon and in the next 18 months. Yeah. Nothing about Tom Brady has told you you should rely on historical precedent. Nothing. Everything from the start of his career has said he's breaking historical precedent. Lowest rated quarterback to have this kind of career. Lowest drafted quarterback to have this kind of career. To play this late in his career. Sure. Everything he's done says throw everything out the window. Including, by the way, that he's reinventing how you take care of your body. All these other guys you point out, they don't eat like Brady. They don't exercise like Brady. He keeps muscle pliability. That's his main thing. My man eats 80% vegetables and grains, Max. He won't touch a tomato. Well, well in that case, he'll, in that oh, case, he'll be great at 50. He I won't mean, touch a tomato because he's worried about inflammation. Yeah. This guy is prepared to play later to than so anybody asking, you've ever so seen. So what you're, what you're saying is because Brady presents you with the most evidence that maybe he could be the first quarterback ever to be elite at 41, therefore... It's actually a better than 50-50 proposition that it's going to happen. Because you're right when you identify. All I'm really saying is everyone gets old. And by the way, at that position, but here's the age at which they get old. And people want to argue with One you. last point. These statistics always exist until they don't. Right. No NFL rushing champion had ever won the Super Bowl until Emmitt Smith did. We always have these stats until they're gone. And what I would suggest to you, Tom Brady, is going to be the moment of truth for your Tom Brady will president. break the odds. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Stephen A., get in here. Stephen A. He has... The same coach, the same system, on top of it all, you could barely touch the quarterback in this day and age, and he takes care of his health. To me, Max' position is utterly ridiculous. I've been saying this. I can't believe he's got me agreeing with Will Kane of all people. Feels but good. I have no choice in this matter because Will Kane is absolutely right when he points out the stuff that he pointed out. The eating right, taking care of himself, got the supermodel wife. I mean, he, he's he got it all. And, and, you know, listen, happy wife, happy life. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, he's living large. And we all know, and, and keep this in mind, Max Kellerman, this is the part where I got you. And I hope you, and I want y'all to put, put me up on the, on the split screen because I got Max here. I mean, Max, there is no way you can get around what I'm about to say <laughs> to you. It's going to blow you away more than anything that I have ever time. said. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready for this match? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready, too. This is going to be good. I <laughs> am not married. But you are. Mm -hmm. The power of stress, the power of happiness, elevates people. Stay with me here. You are a very, very happy man. Every time you walk in with those <laughs> eyes of yours, you just look beautiful. I mean, it's not just the beautiful daughters, it's the beautiful wife. Every day, my lion Molly Wood. I mean, does this guy, does this guy, does this guy, does this guy rave? Does this guy or does he not rave about his wonderful wife and family every single day? So guess what? That makes you happy. And when you are happy and healthy, Stay with me, Will, as well. I'm here. This is something that ultimately stretches your lifespan in a lot of different That's ways. True. Can you're I, healthier. Can you're I ask feeling the good. The first your spirit is up. The whole bit. Wait, 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 wait. But I just want to complete this metaphor really quick. See, so Max is happy and healthy at home. And you're not? Is that what you're saying? Oh, I, you were the other well, end of that spectrum. That explains why talk, I win all the debates on this show. Is that show? why hold we're hold elevated? Hold I must confess. I must confess to you. I'm a happy man. But it's nothing compared to how happy I intend to be. 
Y'all lives are the way that they are. I'm going this way. Oh, we peaked. Oh, I'm we peaked. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm all right. <laughs> I'm okay. It's coming. It's coming. Life is getting better. <laughs> it's closing in on me. It's closing in. The 48-year-old. The 48-year-old's peaked. <laughs> And I Stephen have no doubt. You know why? No, no, no. I'm sorry. The younger happy. men have peaked. Yeah. The 48 year olds on the rise. Because he waited to get <laughs> That's married. right. Yeah. Yep. That's right. Well, you know what? Hey, listen. Some guys had to be older when they were younger. You see what I'm saying? Yep. A lot of things. <laughs> yep. That's all. And it's all going to happen. The fairy tale.